<laughs> hey everybody, I'm gonna to try to make the end all be all video for the concept of opportunity cost, perhaps the most important concept in all of economics. I like to say it this way, one of the biggest contributions that the profession of economics has made for the rest of the world is their conception of cost. That's right, the economist's conception of cost of any decision is opportunity cost, this concept of opportunity cost. So this means to an economist, guys, there is no difference between cost and opportunity cost. Guys, in my class, a lot of times we get into theory of the firm and we'll be talking about average total cost, average variable cost, and all kinds of costs. And it never fails that a student raises their hand and says, hey, when we say cost, are we talking about opportunity cost? To which I say, guys, there is no difference because I'm an economist. So to an economist, again, cost, is opportunity cost, the cost of any decision, the true, the real, the right way to conceive of that cost is this concept of opportunity cost. And that's what we're talking about in this video. And it's not easy for all students to understand the concept of opportunity cost. So we're gonna break it down, end all be all video, right? I'm gonna go through three examples. It's gonna take me a little bit of time, but in these three examples, if you pay attention, you will own this very important and somewhat challenging topic, okay, or concept. So opportunity cost, the first thing I'm gonna say, in a nutshell, what is it? It's everything foregone, okay? The biggest way to say it is it's everything foregone. Now, when we try to conceive of it, if we try to like make sure we're capturing everything foregone, we have a way of doing that, and it is this. It is breaking down the opportunity cost or opportunity loss into two components. It's explicit cost, which is the cash outlay of whatever you're looking at, okay? The explicit cost, really simple. This is the one that comes natural to us, okay? Almost all of us look at the cash outlay of doing something. That's what the explicit cost, and it is absolutely part of opportunity cost, okay? That explicit cost is part of opportunity cost. But the economist says you must also, in addition to, look at the implicit cost, which has to do with the alternative, and see every decision has an alternative. And you have to look at that alternative when conceiving cost, which gets us to a really uh, important and known saying out there, there is no such thing as a free lunch. Why do economists say this? Why do we associate this with the profession of economics? It's because of this concept of um, opportunity cost. Here's the deal, guys. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Why do we say that? Well, it is true. The explicit cost could be zero. And usually when the explicit cost is zero, the lay person says, oh, that thing is free, but not the economist. Because the economist says, hey, the real concept of cost is not just the explicit cost of something, but also the implicit cost. And every decision has an alternative. And since every decision has an alternative, every decision, has a cost, and you'll see that in my examples. But here we're gonna do, in this first one we're gonna do, <laughs> you'll have to wait for that last part for the last example, but in this first one we're gonna do, let's apply this concept and see if we can get what type of answer that we get when we try to come up with opportunity costs. So here's the deal, if you're going to McDonald's or you're thinking about going to McDonald's, I should say, you're thinking about going there because it's a decision in front of you, right? And you have estimated that you're gonna spend $5 on whatever meal that you're gonna buy at McDonald's. So how much is it gonna cost you if you go to McDonald's? $5? No. $5 is the explicit cost. It's the cash outlay. Yes, it's part of it. Put that $5 in there, okay, as you're calculating the opportunity cost, but you are not done. You also need to think of the implicit cost, which have to do, again, with those alternatives. So where else would you have gone? Maybe you would have gone to Cheddar's, okay, another restaurant. Now, when you think of this implicit cost, here's how you do it. You say, hey, what was the joy or benefit of going to that alternative restaurant minus the explicit cost of going to that alternative restaurant, okay? Now, some of y'all might be saying, how do I estimate the joy or benefit that this other restaurant would provide me? Ah, good question, here's the answer. It is the maximum that you would be willing to pay. So if it's not obvious what the benefits are in monetary terms, you can estimate the monetary terms by always asking yourself this question. What's the maximum I'd be willing to pay? Not the price of that alternative meal that you would get at Cheddar's, but what's the maximum you'd be willing to pay for that alternative meal, okay? So I'm gonna say there's some alternative meal at Cheddar's and you would be willing to pay $15 for it. So we're gonna put $15 right there minus the explicit cost of that alternative meal. Let's say the price on the menu is $10 for that alternative meal. Okay, with all that information, what's the cost of going to McDonald's? The explicit cost, $5, that's how much you're gonna spend at McDonald's, plus the implicit cost, $15 of benefit or joy from eating the alternative meal at Cheddar's, 
minus the explicit cost, the cost on the menu of that meal. So what's the cost of going to McDonald's? It's not just $5, it's $5 plus 15 minus 10, which is five. It is $10 is the cost of going to McDonald's. Next, Lisa, 14 years old, okay? Thinking about opening up a lemonade stand, okay? Now, in Lisa's hometown, we're gonna say there's a place you can go to and you can rent out everything you need for a lemonade stand for $50. And we're also gonna say she's thinking about opening up this lemonade stand for 10 hours on a Saturday, okay? And again, she can get everything she needs to run this lemonade stand for $50, five zero, okay? And again, we're gonna say at the end of the year, she's renting it, so at the end of the day, she's gotta return everything she doesn't use and or, or in all the like, the table, the chairs, the canopy, and all that kind of stuff too, okay? At the end of the day. So, with that said, what is the cost of her running a lemonade stand, opening up a lemonade stand? $50? Mm, well, $50 is definitely the explicit cost, okay? So $50 is part of the cost. But us economists, we're like, that's not all there is to cost. There is an alternative to the lemonade stand. So we ask ourselves, what's her best alternative? And let's just say she could have babysat on that same day for some family out there who would have paid her $12 an hour for the same amount of time, just to keep everything simple, just to keep it conceptual. So that's right, there was an alternative. Her best alternative to open up the lemonade stand was go babysit, to go babysit. And we're gonna say that family would have paid her $12 an hour, remember, 10 hours now of lemonade stand versus 10 hours of babysitting. Well, so what is the cost of opening up the lemonade stand? It's not just the $50, of the, which is that cash outlay. It is the joy or the benefit of the alternative. Now, in this one, very simple to calculate the benefit in dollar terms, right? You just take 10 hours of babysitting times 12, right? Which is $120. So $120 we put right here minus the explicit cost of the alternative. Now, remember, not every decision has an explicit cost and babysitting doesn't have an explicit cost, let's say. Let's say that the family might be right next door to her or something like that, okay? So there's no travel cost or anything like that. So we're just gonna put zero right there. So what's the cost of running this lemonade stand? It's not, again, just $50. It is $50, that cash outlay, get all that stuff to run the lemonade stand, plus 120, which is $170. That's right. She needs to make over $170 or project over $170 in revenues for her to be, you know, for it to make sense to open up this lemonade stand. That's example number two. Now, example number three, okay? In this example, you are given a free ticket to a concert. We're gonna call it Mumford & Sons, okay? So a free ticket to go see Mumford & Sons. What's the cost of going to see Mumford & Sons, okay? Well, a lot of people would immediately say, well, it's free because you are given a free ticket, to which I would say the explicit cost is zero but there is no such thing as a free lunch. There's no such thing as a free concert. Even though you have a free ticket, a ticket has been given to you, that just means the explicit cost is gonna be zero. There is always an alternative. So here's what we're gonna say. We're gonna make it kind of complicated here. We're gonna say, first of all, that ticket might have a resale value, okay? So let's make the resale value of that ticket $100, okay? Okay, right there. If that, if I just ended it right there, you know that's gonna be part of the cost. By going to the ticket, handing that ticket to the turnstile and having them rip it apart and you walk in, you are foregoing, right, $100 now because you could have sold the ticket for $100. So, here we go, uh, or let's to finish this out. So, we're gonna say there's a resale value of that ticket of $100, but I'm not done there because by going to that concert, Mumford & Sons, that, that takes time. And when you have a time component, you need to say, well, what would I have done with my time, okay? And let's say you would have gone to an alternative concert, all right? Now, for that alternative concert, we need to do something. We need to say, well, what is the joy or benefit of that alternative concert? How do we estimate that? Like I said before, you figure out what's the maximum you would have paid for that alternative concert. Again, two concerts are going on in your city. We'll say they're kind of equal distance from you, okay? No parking costs for either one, just to get rid of all that extra noise, just to keep it nice and conceptual. And so we say, look, you could have gone to this other concert, 
what's the max you would have paid for a ticket to the other concert? You know, just get Mumford, if Mumford Sons wasn't it, part of your decision, what's the maximum you would have paid? And then how much would you have to pay for that ticket? So here we go. What is the cost of going to Mumford Sons when you're given a free ticket? The Economist says zero explicit cost. Hmm, how about that ticket itself? Could you have done something? Was there an alternative you could have done? Yeah, you could have sold it for $100. Okay, $100 is part of the cost of going to Mumford & Sons. Plus, what would you have done with your time? Oh, you would have gone to an alternative concert. What's the maximum you would have paid? What's that maximum you would have paid for that alternative concert? Oh, $120, okay, got it. And then, what is the explicit cost of that other concert? Let's say the explicit cost of that other ticket is $60. So what is the cost of going to Mumford Sons when given a free ticket? The economist says, well, zero explicit plus $100 resale value of that ticket plus 120 benefit of this alternative concert, maximum you would have paid for that alternative ticket, minus $60, the price of that ticket, which comes out to 60. So 100 plus 60, it's $160. <laughs> Guys, this is also why the economist sometimes stands alone at parties. That's right. What I mean by that is, guys, you're asked a question in economics of being given a free ticket to go see Mumford & Sons. How much does it cost you to see Mumford & Sons? <laughs> the layperson, maybe you may say the normal person would say, it's a free, you're given a free ticket. How much does it cost you? It costs you nothing. The economist says, no, 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 no. By my calculation, the cost is 160, okay? And again, how did I get to that 160? Zero explicit cost, you had a free ticket. However, implicit cost, the alternative would have been to sell the ticket, $100 right there, plus go to this other concert, 120 benefit, $120 in benefit, because that's the maximum you would have paid for this other concert, minus $60, the price of that ticket, that other concert, 120 minus 60 is 60, 60 plus that resale value of 100, 160. Whew. Now, again, that was fast. Three examples, the McDonald's, the babysitting, and the Mumford & Sons ticket question, okay? You might wanna go watch the video again, listen to all three examples. If you can get the right answer or fully understand the right answer for those three examples of what we calculated the opportunity cost to be, you own this concept. And here's how we're gonna end, guys. What is opportunity cost? The opportunity cost is everything foregone. It's not just the cash you're foregoing when you do something, okay, the cash outlay. It also includes this alternative, okay? What are you foregoing? What's the alternative that you are foregoing? And that's why there is no such thing as a free lunch because there's always an alternative to any decision. Therefore, there's always a cost. There's not always an explicit cost. There's always an implicit cost. So there's always some cost because cost is opportunity cost. Hope that made sense to you. Watch it twice. We'll see you in the next video.